Welcome to a new edition of the Everlast Power video series. In this edition we will feature the Everlast SN200 spool gun to demonstrate basic spool gun components and setup to weld aluminum. Although this gun comes in two primary configurations to fit Everlast MIG welders, there are many similarities across most brands of spool guns. So we'll begin today by taking a look at the basic components of a spool gun. The Everlast spool guns utilize the main Euro gun connection and pick up both gas and power from the common connection. Control of the wire feed mechanism is offered through a separate remote connection featured here. Now let's open the cover and take a look at the basic internal components. The wire feeder mechanism is made up of the drive roller, the idler roller, the gun liner, the spring tensioner, and the tension adjustment knob. Wire feeding tension is critical to smooth feeding of the filler metal. It must be readjusted for different metal types. Keep in mind less tension should be used for aluminum. The drive roller has two grooves designed to feed several different wire diameters. To select the correct drive roll groove for your wire, locate the small socket head screw located on the side of the drive roller. Turn the roller so that it is accessible by the socket head wrench. Use the socket head wrench to loosen the screw. Then slide the roller off of the main drive shaft. Here you can clearly see the different width grooves. Select the groove that fits your wire best without slipping. To reinstall the drive roller, find the flat side to the shaft and orient the drive roller so that the screw is on the flat side of the shaft. To reassemble, press and hold the tensioner with your thumb so the drive roller is allowed enough clearance to slide down the shaft. Slide the drive roller down and make sure that it is fully seated. Then retighten the screw, making sure the screw is still centered in the middle of the flat side. Some spool guns, such as the Everlast SN200, use a left hand threaded screw to hold the wire spool in place. This is done to prevent friction from loosening the screw while the spool is rotating. It's a good idea to mark the head of the screw to serve as a reminder. The speed control is located on the side of the gun. This is used mainly to adjust wire speed and welding amps. On most Everlast iMIG units, this adjustment is disconnected and the adjustment of both wire speed and voltage is made on the main panel. For the MTS series, the adjustment is functional. Now let's look at the spool gun consumables. The copper gas cone is mounted on the outside shaft of the gun. This model is interchangeable with most 24 series MIG guns from Trafamet and Benzel. Next we have the contact tip. The standard tip that comes with this gun is a .040 tip. When welding aluminum, you must select at least one size larger tip than the wire diameter. The gun liner and diffuser is held in place by the contact tip holder. Next we have the gas diffuser. This ceramic piece can be broken after it is removed. Do not force it on or off. When you're assembling the gas diffuser, make sure that the holes are pointing to the outside and not inside the housing. Use a small wrench if necessary to lightly tighten the contact tip and the holder during assembly. contact tip is available in a heavy version or a lighter version. Both these tips will interchange with standard Tweco 11 series and some Lincoln MIG tips. 
Notice that the size is printed on the side. For extended aluminum welding, use a heavier tip because it will help to handle the heat much better. These tips are also available in a long or short version. Make sure the tip is recessed for spray arc of aluminum. To connect the MIG gun to weld aluminum, make sure the unit is set up for positive polarity. Insert the connector at the MIG gun connection point, then install the control wire. Almost any good quality MIG wire can be used in the spool gun. To install the wire, remove the gas cone and the contact tip. Make sure the wire is rolling off from the top. Next, open the cover and remove the left hand screw, turning it clockwise to loosen. Slide the roll on with the label facing out and reinstall the screw. Pull the wire out from the hole in the side of the spool. Be careful not to allow the spool to spin freely. Straighten the wire, then clip off the bent or deformed end of the wire. Now insert the wire into the nylon pickup. Carefully release the tension on the tensioner by pressing on it with your finger. Feed the wire through until it starts into the liner. Make sure the wire is correctly tracking in the groove on the drive roller. With the gun connected and the unit on, press the trigger to fully feed the wire through to the end of the gun. Leave at least two inches sticking out. Retrim the wire and install the contact tip and the gas cone. That concludes part one. Look for part two of this video where we discuss how to use the spool gun to weld aluminum. If you have any questions about Everlast or any of its products, please give us a call at the number listed above. Thanks for watching.